Hello, everybody, and welcome to day five, the final day of Connecticut Coalition to End Homelessness Housing Equals Justice Conference. Uh, I'm Madeline Ravish from the Connecticut Coalition to End Homelessness, and we've been thrilled to have more than a thousand people sign up to join our 18th Annual Training Institute and Conference. So it's been great so far. We have one last wonderful day, and we're thrilled to be starting today with Open Doors in Norwalk, where you're in for a treat. Some of you saw Open Doors, uh, who, like, the short tour of, the, of one of the rooms on Monday, but today you get to see the whole thing. So you're in for a treat. A little bit about the Housing Equals Justice Conference. Uh, we are um, uh, covering topics like criminal justice, racial justice, criminal justice, racial justice and economic justice, which are three threads that run through all of our work together to end homelessness. We're also taking a deep dive into COVID and its implications for homelessness and hope that you'll join the session right after this one on COVID guidance uh, to really understand what our shelters are doing and can do to adapt to this brave new world uh, of COVID and keep shelter re residents safe while making sure that we're doing the best for everybody around. And if you have been enjoying this conference, please help us tell the world that housing equals justice. Our hashtag for the conference is ATI 2020. We also have the hashtags housing equals justice and end homelessness. So please spread the word on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And of course, we want to thank our sponsors, Bank of America and Zillow, our two presenting sponsors who've made it possible for us to offer this conference free of charge to all of you today. So uh, thank you so much, Bank of America and Zillow for making this possible. And we're in for a great day. And of course, if you haven't checked out our store, please do. We do have t-shirts, face masks, and mugs, just like my mug here. Um, so please do check out our store at the ATI website and spread the word. And so with that, I'm really pleased to turn the stage over, the stage or whatever you call this, to Erin McDonough from Open Doors, who is going to give us a tour of Open Doors and the, the, their wonderful facility. Thank you, Erin, and here you go. Hi, thank you so much. Um, we're so glad to be here. Yeah, Open Doors has been in Norwalk since 1984. We're a shelter and affordable housing program. Um, we provide a lot of other services to folks here in Fairfield County. So it's a, it's a busy day. It's pretty noisy outside. So we're just gonna head right in and learn a little more about Open Doors. We really are. Hello and welcome to Open Doors. Uh, we are a homeless and housing service organization in Norwalk. I'm Michelle Condorino. I am the executive director. Uh, we are so thrilled to share our facility with you today. Um, we do multiple things here at Open Doors, uh, but at our heart, we are a homeless shelter. We serve uh, individuals and families here. Uh, throughout uh, the pandemic, we uh, decompressed our shelter. Um, we moved about half of our population into hotels, but we never abandoned this facility and we kept serving um, people experiencing homelessness here. Um, but at the same time, we also did a lot of renovations, which we're really excited to show off to you today. And the first is our lobby. So we actually redid um, the entire lobby we doubled the size um, so that way we would be able to serve um, or social distance people um, as well as we can. Um, as you can see, we went with a subway theme. And the reason for that um, is because we are a stop on someone's journey, but we're not a destination. So we wanted to keep that thought of movement um, uh, throughout our facility and you'll see we try to make um, reference to that as much as we can. We have our little subway handle there as well. Um, so as I said, we're really thrilled. Please enjoy um, the rest of the viewing of our building and uh, we look forward to the day where we might be able to see you in person. Thank yeah, you. Thank you. So we're going to head through 
We've got kind of an inspiration board, apartments for rent. We have our job board. And then all sorts of info on things going on in the community. It's just a little hub for guests to be able to see what's happening. And as we go through the halls, we'll see um, so many different pieces of artwork with keys um, so that people are always thinking about their next steps and uh, getting housed. This is our common room slash dining room slash all purpose room. Before COVID, uh, folks would come and have meals here. Right now, it's only open to shelter guests. And you'll see that each space is socially distanced and everyone is, is as safe as we can possibly be right now. So we'll pop in to the kitchen and say hi to Chef T. So this is our kitchen space. We provide meals not only to guests here at Open Doors, but also to our um, members of our community. Hey, Chef. Just getting morning. pantry. Good morning. Andrew's one of our amazing volunteers. Just getting pantry bags ready. So we're always running 24-7. You don't even need to, we can get them next Chef, did you want to say something really quick about uh, the kitchen and serving folks in the community? Well, you know, it, it, everything has changed now because of the COVID. Uh, we're now down to only doing two meals a day at the door. Um, but with the help of all of our donors that we have, um, our volunteer groups that are donating the meals, we're able to be successful. Because without their help, we wouldn't be able to do it by ourselves. So I thank just want to you. thank everybody that's out here helping us and continue to Donate to the pantry and continue to donate to the kitchen. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Yeah. With COVID, both the pantry and the kitchen have changed to a takeout model. So everyone grabs a bag right at the pantry door. This is Frank. We're going to see Frank in a second. Hi, Frank. Everyone. Welcome. <laughs> Welcome. Yes. Usually this place is, as, as Michelle described, the, the train theme, usually this place is like Times Square. I mean, our guests, our community clients, visitors, volunteers, donors are in and out. Uh, but obviously things were pretty much at a standstill around the middle of March. Uh, obviously the pandemic and, and different, uh, we had to proceed very differently. So. Uh, in that, we had the opportunity. Uh, with not that much traffic, we were able to take care of it and do some repairs and make some nice improvements. Yeah, um, so we'll see the men's dorm a little later. We're going to pop in and talk to Sam. This is our night office. Hi. No, no, no. So ignore that person. She, <laughs> she's wonderful. She's on her team. Um, And this is Sam's desk. Sam's our outreach case manager. And here's Sam. <laughs> so I'm going to spin back around. Mm -hmm. um, we're going to see you at 11 today. Yes, ma'am. Yes, for the workshop on outreach. Yes, I think it'd be great for people to know a little more about how it's been since you started doing outreach here at Open Doors. Mm -hmm. I'm ready. Go for it. So You're live. Um, so basically what I do, I assist the street homeless with all the same case management services that all of the in-house clients get. I'm very big on just because the person is still street homeless does not mean they cannot get assistance. They can get food stamps assistance, they can get any type of income that they can, whether it be employment or some type of benefit type income. They can get housing assistance, medical assistance. That's my job to bring the assistance to them. Yep. And people can work on their housing plan without having to come to shelter. Absolutely. Awesome. Awesome, thank you so much. We'll no see you in a problem. couple hours. Yes, ma'am. I see a question on Q&A. Oh, yay! I know, we have some great CCEH swag. Um, there's a mug at her desk as well that I think we missed. 
So Frank's taking us into the men's dorm. We have very good protocols about which staff goes where. So he is my tour guide. This is our largest dorm. This is our men's dorm. Uh, we usually have 42 beds uh, for individual males. Um, however, due to the pandemic, uh, we've had to make some changes, obviously, to follow the guidelines. Uh, social distancing, etc. Uh, we were we had to install some dividers. Yeah, you can see all the plexi here that goes in between. It's kind of a pod of four bunks, but we only have um, one guest per section. Now, due to the guidelines that we have to follow for everyone's safety, uh, forty-two beds uh, available have become now fifteen. Uh, so we're working and trying to figure out what can be done with other community representatives and agencies uh, when it starts to get cold. What do we do uh, for people? Usually our numbers uh, increase uh, due to the extreme weather, but we're working hard now trying to uh, figure out and come up with a plan uh, to house those individuals to keep them safe. But yeah. we've been able to, you know, take care of the floor, do some painting, uh, repair some lockers. Just kind of brighten things up. It's, it's, a, it's an older building and, and normally it's very much heavy in use. Uh, however, we have a good staff who cares and, and um, as far as maintaining them. And though it is a temporary situation, we do want to do our best to make it as comfortable as possible while the person is here. Absolutely, Frank, thank you so much. Thank you. So we'll head back out. We're gonna go to the case manager suite and we'll get to meet Yolanda and our case management team. And you'll always see different inspirational messages. One of them's behind Frank's head. Um, and also our bell is a new tradition here at Open Doors. Every time somebody gets matched with housing, they move into their own place, we ring the bell. More key motifs. This is the entry to our day space. Everybody's hanging out in there who opted not to be on camera. Good morning. Good How are you? morning, Yolanda. She's our director of client services. We'd love you to talk about um, the case management team here. Sure. Shelter and housing and, and housing first. Okay. So case managers, we have three case managers. They work with um, males, individual females, and families. We have um, three housing case managers. One does strictly rapid rehousing. The other two do permanent supportive housing and rapid rehousing. Um, in this department, we work very hard to assist the clients um, that come into shelter to get them housed. Um, we figure out what the barriers are using the housing first model and really try to work on getting them housed. Everyone's situation is very different. So we have to get very creative and strategize as a team so we can all get together and make it happen. Great, thank you so no much. No problem. So yeah, this is actually a relatively new piece of open doors. Um, these are all our case managers offices. Everybody's got their own inspirational message. And then we have a space for folks to gather safely, socially distanced. Um, and talk about their housing plan, talk about things that they need to take the next steps. And this is everybody's uh, place to kind of go and relax and reconnect. After a long day, this is our backyard. So we feel really lucky that we can kind of get back into green space and breathe the fresh air and, and be comfortable. And it's way warmer than it was when I started this tour, so. We're, we're so glad to be here.
So that's us. That's Open Doors. Thank you so much. This was really, really wonderful. And uh, if anybody does have any questions, we'll wait a little bit to put any questions for any questions in the Q&A. So uh, do feel free to put any questions in the chat. I have a question for you while we're yeah. waiting to see if anybody else does. Some of it, yesterday we heard from Downtown Evening Soup Kitchen and heard a little bit about what the what the what um, desk was seeing in the greater New Haven community. I wondered if you could speak a little bit about what you're seeing in terms of homelessness in Norwalk right now and in Fairfield County in general, if you can speak to that. Absolutely. I think I very much agree with the folks who um, had some great insight about the New Haven area that we have not yet gotten to the point where we've seen the full effects of COVID. Um, with people um, being able to stay in their homes, with the pause on evictions, um, with the pause on legal evictions, it doesn't necessarily mean that some landlords aren't still working to push people out. Um, we haven't seen a big spike in people needing shelter here in the area, but we have seen an increased interest, uh, increased need for food. We have seen an increased need for other services, and we know that's going to stretch into the winter. So our hope is that people are able to stay housed and they never have to come to shelter in the first place. Great. And I wondered if you could also speak to how Open Doors works with the rest of the Coordinated Access Network. For anybody who doesn't know what the Coordinated Access Network or CAN is, uh, the CAN is the it is a coordinated body of all the different agencies in the in Fairfield County uh, who are working together to end homelessness collectively. So I didn't know if you could maybe explain a little bit about how Open Doors fits into this larger group of partners. Absolutely. As part of Opening Doors Fairfield County or the Fairfield County Coordinated Access Network, we're always pulling together to uh, collaborate on resources and on plans. As Frank mentioned, cold weather will be here before we know it. And all of the shelters have limited capacity because of COVID. So having a regional plan and a town by town plan for warming stations and what happens when it gets cold is so important. And it's something that we're working on as a collective. And I think that the support of the CAN for resources, for coming up with new ideas, for working together as a team has been really invaluable. Great. And um, one last question before we, cl we close, unless there's anybody else who jumps in, what are your needs? We, it, we know funding is always a concern for any shelter. Uh, what are the needs that, that Open Doors has right now and any other needs that you're, that you're seeing for people who may be watching who are trying to figure out how they can help? Absolutely. As you said, funding is always important. Um, we have seen a large increase in the need for food and we aren't able to host food drives the way we had in the past. So donating food for food drives is a huge help. Um, we're also really asking people to learn more about affordable housing options and to talk to folks they know about why affordable housing is so important and really what it means because I think a lot of people don't fully understand how important affordable housing is and what it means, especially here in Fairfield County. It can be so tough to get by, no matter your income. Well, thank you so much, Erin, and thank you to all of your colleagues. It was wonderful to see what you've been doing. Uh, for those of you who are interested, as I was, to see the plexiglass in the inside the shelter and how Open Doors has been so creative about adapting. Uh, do remember that, that next there's going to be a session uh, where you'll be able to ask questions of CDC, uh, the Department of Public Housing, and the Department of Housing on how to meet cold weather shelter needs under COVID-19. So tune in for that. Uh, it should be really quite interesting. Um, so thank you so much, Erin. Thank you to everybody at the Open Doors team that, for making this wonderful uh, session possible. Uh, just a quick recap of what you're going to be able to see today. We have COVID-19 guidance coming up next. Then we have a really uh, interesting outreach roundtable heat up where you'll be able to hear from the people out in the field sharing their glimpse into what's happening right now and what to do about it. Um, then we'll be doing our get out the vote rally. Check out my ribbons. I'm so ready for this. So 
hope that you'll tune in for the Get Out the Vote rally led by Jerry Jones, uh, but with many other guests talking about what's happening with respect to getting out the vote here in Connecticut and around the country. Um, and then right following that, we'll have Building Our Movement, a look into a peek into grassroots and, and really a group of people thinking together about how we can advocate together for the resources and policy changes that we need to end homelessness. And next after that, we will have the Hamden Virtual Town Hall on homelessness. We're really excited. Yes, yesterday, some of you joined us for the, a wonderful session with the mayors, the Connecticut Conference of Municip Municipalities Mayor's Task Force on Ending Homelessness. Um, we are really excited that just following on the on the just following that, uh, we are going to today at two o'clock have the Hamden Virtual Town Hall on Homelessness where we'll hear from different people in the town working together to end homelessness and how they're doing so. And that can be a model for your town to use uh, a national hunger, homeless and homeless, hunger and homelessness awareness week in November, the week before Thanksgiving. And then at three o'clock, we'll have help not handcuffs, improving and reducing police responses. So important uh, to make sure that police have what they need, the resources and tools they need to be able to assist people experiencing homelessness. So hope that you'll tune in today. And of course, at four o'clock, ending this wonderful conference, we'll have happy hour. Please join us. It's been really wonderful to meet so many of you and hear about how you've experienced this conference, what you like, what you want to learn more about, and just to have that sense of community that we wish we could have in person. And we don't, but we'll be together on Zoom and hope that you will all join us uh, for that last hour of the conference. So thank you so much. Hope to see you all in the many sessions today and especially at the Get Out the Vote rally and see you soon. And thank you again to Open Doors. This was wonderful. Thank you so much. We'll see you soon. See you soon.